Taro, hold on. Okay, holding on, holding on. What's that? They've latched on? Hmm, not that. What the hell? You just blew up my ship! Hmm, sorry, we mistook you for calling wreckage. No offense. I was in the middle of explaining the battle loom to the crew and you- Not a problem, let me help you. No, 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 no. That's not happening. This is my show. This is my ship, so my rules. Fine. But you're getting me a new ship, and I'm using yours until then. The day is January 15th, 0079, and the war between the Earth Federation and the Principality of Xeon began just two weeks before. This comes merely days after their failed attempt to drop a colony on the Earth Federation's main base in Jaburo. This conflict is both known as Operation British and the One Week Battle. Let's roll back just two days prior to the battle, where Dazzle Zabi, Admiral of the Combined Xeon Fleet, launches forces from the space fortress known as Solomon. The combined fleet was organized into five separate parts, totaling in a sum of 112 combat-ready ships, equaling half of the total amount of the Xeon's fleet's crafts. The Federation was well aware of Dazzle's intent, targeting Side 5, also known as Loom. Defending Side 5 was vital to maintaining a foothold in space for the Federation. At this point, Federation forces swiftly began to prepare a preemptive attack on the approaching Xeon fleet in order to curve their objective. Lieutenant General Revel of the Earth Federation would command the fleet, with Admiral Tianum leading the reserve forces stationed at Luna 2. Despite the combat readiness of the Earth Federation forces, they were short on time. They had less than 24 hours to be underway, and their fleet was not entirely mobilized. General Revel ordered the fleet to begin their approach towards Loom, with some of the ships joining the fleet as it was underway. Let's see what the Federation had on its side. 48 Magellan-class battleships, 142 Salamis-class cruisers, 118 missile frigates, in addition to some non-combat units, 84 Columbus-class carriers. These ships would be used to scatter Minoski particles. In all, the Earth Federation outnumbered the Xeon fleet ships 3 to 1. But of course that wasn't all that factored into the battle. The Battle of Loom would be the first major conflict involving the use of mobile suits during the One Year War. During the battle, Xeon would transport 2600 MS-06 Zaku 2s into combat, as well as an additional 320 Zaku 1s. 400 Gattle Space Fighters would also assist in the operation. This would play heavily in the outcome of the battle, since mobile suits were not considered a tide-turning threat to the Federation forces. The Federation forces would heavily underestimate the effectiveness of mobile weapons. Alongside their fleet, the Earth Federation forces also had 60 FFS-3 Saberfish fighters, but these units would not have enough fuel supply to be fully effective. Despite the Federation's efforts, the Xeon fleet makes it to the loom and the attack commences. They begin plans to attach the nuclear pulse engines to Sci-Fi's 11th colony in order to propel it towards Earth. Almost as soon as their side operation is underway, the Federation forces arrive. They immediately disperse Minovsky particles, leaving both sides impaired in combat. Spearheading the attack on the Xeon's fleet was the flagship of the Earth Federation forces, the Magellan-class battleship Nuri, commanded by Brigadier General Rodney Kennigan. The Nuri would be closely followed by the Magellan-class Ananki, commanded by General Revel. Both ships would be heavily armed and equipped to wedge straight through the Xeon fleet, splitting them in two for separate fleets to pick off the reorganizing ships. This would have possibly worked theoretically, since the Magellan-class battleships were well-armed enough to break through the opposing forces, but the Xeon's mobile suits were stationed in the rear of the fleet for support. The decision to increase the density of Minotsky particles, hey, that's me, ultimately meant that the fleet's weapons could not be accurately targeted on enemy ships. This blunder would nullify the Federation's number advantage alongside one other key factor, mobile suits. As the Xeon fleet began to succumb to the Federation's attack plan, Admiral Dozel Zabi ordered all mobile suits to dispatch in order to support the crippling fleet. The 6th mobile fleet unit would spearhead the defense, led by a junior officer by the name of Shar Aznable. His unit would not only successfully support the fleet, but would also begin to put pressure on the wedge attack formation by single-handedly destroying five warships, slowing the Federation's attack maneuver. This single act would propel Shar Aznable's career as Xeon's first renowned mobile suit ace. He soon would gain a new title, the Red Comet. And Shar wasn't alone. 
Just as the six mobile suit fleet broke through the Earth Federation's lines, an independent squad of mobile suits would target and seek the Federation's commanding ship, the Magellan-class Ananki. Though General Level would safely board an escape module to flee the crippled battleship. Unfortunately for Revel, the squad that doomed the Anaki would soon capture his escape module, securing the Federation's head commander as a prisoner of war. This single feat would not only determine the outset of the battle, but would launch the careers of a rough and rowdy trio, Gaia, Ortega, and Mash, together known as the Black Tri-Stars. General Revel, understanding the importance of the event simply stated, just as the old ocean battleships were themselves undone by aircraft. Relating the overwhelming impact of mobile suits during the battle to the influential role that aircraft played in World War II naval combat. As soon as the Anaki fell to the Xeon mobile fleet, the center of the Federation line collapsed. General Kennigan takes command of the Earth Federation fleet with the Nereid at the head of the formation. Due to the overwhelming turn of events with the intervention of mobile suits, the Federation sustained a decrease of over 50% of their combat strength. Kennigan orders an organized withdrawal from Side 5. The Federation fleet, crippled and disoriented, begins to split off into three retreating groups to withdraw from the battlefield, but the Xeon mobile suit fleet is aggressively pursuing them. Dozel's fleet pursues the retreating group attempting to escape towards Earth. In order to buy a brief amount of time, Kennigan orders the Nereid to cover the retreat with a full forward barrage. It's a suicide mission, but it could save the rest of the remaining fleet. Unaware that General Revel was captured and not killed, Kennigan was quoted to say, if the general were still alive, I have no doubt this is what he would do. The Nereid continues to rapidly fire its megaparticle cannons until the barrels nearly fuse in place from the intense heat. The exchange of fire between the Nereid and the forward line of Dozel's fleet carries on until 0514 hours on the 16th of January. After eight direct hits with a megaparticle cannon and four missile unpacks, the Nereid is nearly reduced to space dust. But just enough time was spared to allow the full retreat from the remaining fleet. After an aggressive pursuit, Admiral Dozel's fleet was eventually pulled back to Solomon to regroup with the rest of the Xeon forces. General Kennigan would fall with the Nereid alongside over 80% of the Earth Federation's fleet. Only 42 ships out of 329 would escape. Of the 84 Columbus-class carriers, only two would survive to retreat. Xeon losses were modest in comparison to the Federation's. Of the 112 ships participating in the operation, only 40 were lost. Side 5 was completely destroyed, leaving over 2 billion civilian casualties from just one battle. After observing the aftermath of the battle, Degwin Zabi asked, Are these destroyed ruins the result of beam cannon fire? To which Dozel stoically replied, No, this is what our mobile suits have done. After realizing the significant role of mobile suits in the Battle of Loom, both sides began to build up the development of their own weaponry. Xeon would continue to develop and evolve their current models to fit various combat roles. While the Earth Federation would pour their resources into developing a specialized mobile suit program that would revolutionize the battlefield. Overall, Loom was a turning point for both sides in the universal century. A new weapon proved to change warfare for centuries to come. The mobile suit era begins. Well, that's it! That's it? These people wait almost a year for you to make one video and all you can say is that